What's up everybody? In this video, we're going to talk about the four key components that is involved in social media marketing and why you need to be focusing on all four. And a lot of businesses and brands are not getting this right. So we'll talk about that in this video. We'll go over a few things that are going to be really important for you so that you can get social media marketing right and actually see your return on investment from it. Let's get into the video. All right, everybody, this is the Digital Marketing Madman channel, and my name is Brandon Brashears. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch today. If you like digital marketing, and if you're trying to grow your brand or business with digital marketing, be sure to subscribe to this video I and mean, this channel because I make daily marketing videos. So let's talk about today's topic. We're talking about social media marketing. Now, social media marketing, there's a lot of misconceptions around it, I think. So if I say social media marketing, to some people it means like posting on Facebook, to some people it means posting on Instagram. A lot of times, though, small businesses and brands, they think about using these social channels just as like a megaphone where they're shouting out and they're throwing out their offers into the, the universe and hoping that somebody basically bites on it and that they're gonna get a client. There's so much more to social media. It's really interesting. When you think about most of the marketing channels that are out there, especially email marketing or text message marketing, um, what happens typically is a new technology is created to allow communication, right? and from that communication, it's not typically a one-way broadcast. Another example is direct mail, right? Mail was invented to communicate between people. And then advertisers jumped in there and they started broadcasting messages. And now we have junk mail and nobody <laughs> reads the mail. Although as time goes on, fewer and fewer people are doing direct mail. So there's an, an opportunity there to get back in to interrupt the pattern. But that's kind of how marketing goes in general. Marketing Marketers ruin channels because they get in there, they start broadcasting their message, it gets noisy, and then attention is off the platform. So what can you do to offset this? There's four things that I think uh, entail social media marketing. And if you do these four things, you're going to have a better relationship with the people that follow your brand. You're going to be able to sell more and have more influence. And I think you're going to get a lot better results out of your social media marketing. So let's get into what these four things are. The first aspect is social listening. Now, this is where you're going to monitor and see what people are talking about your brand. This is a very important aspect to social media. People can get on social media and start bashing your brand, or they can start saying great things about your brand. But being able to respond to both of those is very, very important. You can also go on social media and find people who need the service that you offer, engage with those people, build a community around them, but you can't find them unless you're listening. So you need to know which channel you're going to be on and what are the best places to listen. So a few examples, um, Facebook, if you're on Facebook, it's kind of hard to listen because people aren't just, you're not able to search in general, but there are groups and there are other social elements where people are gathering together around products and services and interests, right? So if you're doing, let's say, if let's say you're a plumber or something, getting into a buy, sell, trade group inside of your city, right? Where people from your city are um, all getting together, talking about stuff that's going on. So community groups are great if you're local. If you're a national brand, finding people who are interested in the stuff that you're interested in nationally too. So let's say you're a camera store. Now maybe getting into a video creators group or um, a YouTube group, right? Where so people who are creating videos, they're gonna talk about products and you can jump in there, offer advice. And when you're starting to offer advice, you're listening and engaging with the people that are gonna be in your brand and your community. Now there are two kind of examples in Facebook. With Instagram, it's easy to follow certain hashtags and engage people within those hashtags. Twitter is very easy with search and, and hashtags as well. So depending on where you are online is going to kind of depend on the strategy that you use for your social listening. It's really important that you have set up and notifications so that you can be sure and see if anybody is giving you poor reviews or if a lot of times there's um, bad things that happen when it comes to like lynch mobs that are chasing down brands. So you wanna be able to turn off reviews if you're getting a wave of bad PR or something's happening like that. Um, and I've seen a lot of good businesses kind of fall victim to these social justice warriors who are coming after people. Now I'm gonna give you an example. For example, uh, uh, in the veterinary industry, there are groups of people who are super, super crazy about decline cats. And um, they will call and they'll try to ruin veterinary practices who do decline. Now, I, I'm not gonna comment on 
whether declawing should be done or should not be done. But veterinarians are really compassionate people. Every vet that I've ever met you know, from my podcast that I've done has been really compassionate. And so to have this group of people that are chasing them down, trying to ruin their business, it just is not fair. So you want to be able to turn off reviews um, if something like that does happen. And that does happen nowadays. People that are in these activist groups, they will actually go out of their way to try and ruin people. And so that's not necessarily fair. So that's social listening. It's important. Another aspect of that is when you have somebody who loves the brand that you have and loves the work that you do, it's so easy to turn those people into an advocate by then investing more in them. So if somebody's giving you a great review, say thank you so much and send them something. And actually send them something for saying thanks uh, and and engage with them. They're going to take that that level of brand love that they already have for you and then become a raving advocate. And that's so valuable. You can't, you know, have enough of those people out there that are championing your business. The next spot is called social influencing. And social influencing is what most people are trying to do already. So this is things like posting content, um, putting out uh, different videos or written pieces or posting to your blog doing live streams, things like that. So this is where you're going to be trying to actively influence people who follow you through typically content because content is how people are engaging on platforms. So with this, you're going to want to be sure to be consistent. Um, you're going to also want to be sure to create as high quality of content as possible and also make it as native to the platform as possible. Now, there's always going to be limitations with that. So if you're doing a blog, it's kind of hard to just create content only for Facebook that's written, but you can do that. So test that out. Try to build your influence as much as possible. Make the content as native as it possibly can because you're going to get more distribution for sure and you're going to get more engagement whenever that happens. So for content and, and influence and distribution, I really like LinkedIn right now. I like Facebook and Instagram. And uh, I've never been a huge fan of Twitter, um, but that, that could work depending on your specific um, product type and content type. But here, it's just really important that you're consistent People will develop relationships with brands who are consistently posting. Unless you're like incredibly insightful and you only post something every once in a while where people are actively looking for you, um, then you have to be you know, really special for that to work out. But for most people, you have to be consistent. So sh developing relationships with people, you want people who are going to be there consistently. Same thing with brands. They want to know that you're going to be there, that you're going to provide content and value. So. When you're, when you're trying to do your social influencing, make sure that you're actively listening to your, your clients and your customers, finding out what they want the, to create, uh, and then put that content out there. You're able to also measure at this level the engagement that you get, the clicks and the likes and the shares and the comments, so that way you can know what's working and what's not. So social influencing is number two, which leads us to number three. Okay, the third thing is social networking. And here you're gonna use your influence and your authority to hopefully meet other people, so both customers and clients, but not only that, but other brands and influencers who can help you to reach more of your target audience. So for example, a great example is, like let's say you're in real estate and you do real estate as a real estate agent. Now inside of real estate, there's a ton of other industries who have clients that are similar to yours, but that are not direct competition. So you could do contractors, you could do plumbers and carpenters and loan officers because in this industry, you have other people who help to service your clients at the same time, but are not directly competitive with you. So networking out and finding those people, collaborating on projects, combining ad spend and doing co-branded events. And that's really the power of social network is that you're able to take your audience, expand it by collaborating with other people. Um, in the veterinary industry, for example, in my podcast that I did, I started out by interviewing people who were slightly more influential than me. And I kept building up and building up until I was able to get to the top of the industry and basically have anybody that I want inside of the industry on my podcast, which is really, really cool. So that's the power of social networking. It lets you connect with people and expand your network and hopefully get a broader message out to more of the right people. The final part that we're going to talk about is called social selling. So this is actually using social networking to generate leads and sales and, and sell products. And that's one huge aspect of social networking there's social media and social media marketing that is not actively talked about. When I hear people who say, you know, I've tried the social media stuff, it doesn't work. The problem is they're not actually selling things. This is one of the most important parts. It seems like a no-brainer, but if you're not actively making offers, you're not going to sell things. So figure out what kind of offers you can create 
that are going to generate leads to help further your relationship. And they could be appropriate to sell things. You should hopefully be selling things. If you have an audience, you've developed an audience, start selling stuff. They want to buy from you. And if you don't put out what it is that you're selling, you can't be unhappy when they don't go and buy stuff from you. So actively work to generate different types of offers that generate not only sales, but also leads, and then put those people into your funnel and hopefully market to them more. So I hope that this video was helpful. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments or need help with anything, please comment below. And if you liked the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing here. I do daily marketing videos and I talk about creating my digital marketing agency. So thanks for watching everybody. I'll see you on the next video. Have a good one.